as you were in Canada just now, I was coming back from Europe from a few months there. So unfortunately, I was not able to see your historic Canadian shows. So before we <laughs> talk about everything we need to talk about, um, how did that go? It was your first time in Canada? I know you went to see the Niagara Falls as everybody that comes to Canada for the first time. So um, how, how was that run of shows? It was really good. I had a lot of fun with great audience. And uh, Niagara Falls was also very interesting. Unfortunately, it was still winter time, and the the, the caves were not open. You know, yeah, I, yeah, 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 I yeah. wish I would have gone down to the caves and see it from behind. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we have to do this next time when we come. You'll have to come back. Or, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll have to come back. You'll have to come back. Um, all right, and the next stop is Japan. So very right. different. And then we've got Europe. This is truly a world tour. There are so many artists that play in five different countries and then they call it a world tour. You're properly doing a world tour. Um, uh, in, 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 uh, it's an intense uh, schedule for you right now. I know in Canada you played the new single. By the time you're going to play these new shows, the new album will be out. But it's also 40 years of the band that you're celebrating. So what's the mix? going? Are you going to change the set now that you have 21 new songs to promote? Yeah, yeah, we're just discussing this at the moment. It's going to be, of course, a few more of the new songs should be should yeah. be in, you know. And of course, there should be a kind of a best of, you know, like at least uh, get get the, the the popular songs in, you know. It's it's way too much. It's a couple of hundred songs. You never able to play this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, when 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 the when when it was clear that you had so many songs to make a double album, like how many times have people made the joke about like? Are you crazy? You already have hundreds of songs, and now there's 21 more. Um, like, like, like th that. That's pretty. That's pretty intense. But it is a true double album, and I'd love to get your perspective here, because um, something that I find something that annoys me at times is that there's a, a ton of bands releasing a double album, but it's 10 songs with extra long intros and extra long outros, and it's it's. It, it just couldn't fit on one disc, if you will. Um, this is a very different approach. Um, do you agree that a double album has to be properly two albums that are connected, but is more than just one very long album? Um, I mean, in this case, we had really a lot of material, which was definitely more than to be put, right. put on just one album, you know. Uh, we didn't really extend the stuff, you know. It's basically basically all all songs under f five exactly. minutes or so. The, the thing was, uh, we we, uh, we when we had the last album out, Resurrection Day. This was autumn twenty one. Uh, there was still Corona going on, and there was another lockdown, so we had to cancel our tour. Uh, at this point and uh, there was a lot of time left uh, so we just sat sat down again with, uh, i sat basically with gene with our guitar player and we just collected ideas more and more and more we had a good run you know and after a couple of months we just realized oh that's so much stuff you know um what do we do with this and my wish was since long time already to have a, to do release one uh, at least once in my lifetime a double album a real yeah, double album because i was uh, when i was a kid you know in the um late 60s early 70s or so i was always very much impressed from these double albums from pink floyd or genesis or so um or uh, deep purple or some of these bands that yeah, were yeah, listening yeah. back at this time you know <laughs> um or even the, the the white album from the beatles you know this was really uh, mind-blowing at this time you know and um so it was always my wish to have to do a double album, and I just realized at this at this point, you know, we have so much material. This would be the chance now to do this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Plus, then this 40th anniversary was coming up, you know, and I just thought, oh, this is a good occasion to do this thing, thing you know. And then we uh, uh, thought about the just like how to concept this, you know, and um, and the idea came up uh, because Rage has uh, developed over this four decades so many different uh, stylistic elements you know uh, we 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 had a phase where we worked a lot with orchestration uh, played a lot with orchestra which is of course a bit different from from what we did at the beginning or what we did in between you know there was a phase when we played pretty progressive you know yeah. in the 2000s or so so the idea was to bring all this together in one album and put it in a homogene mix you know 
So um, the whole thing would, would come together in the end. It's like le- lots of uh, lines that uh, just uh, get together in the end, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, so, also hmm? some, is that also something that you have to you have to do to, to to keep it exciting for you i mean at the end of the day this is 25 or 26 albums in 40 years a few dozen former band members you know you've been doing this for 40 years like if if does he quote unquote another album or yet another album does that still excite you if it wasn't it is massive massive double album uh, where all these elements come together um, I mean, it's, it's not a net, not a not a must, you know. But it was really ex- exciting, and especially at this point where we didn't really know what's what's the future will bring, you know. How long will this fucking pandemic uh, pandemia last, you know? <laughs> so it was at, at this point it was really exciting to have something to to, uh, to invest the energy in, you know, for the fu- for the future, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We just saw, and, and if we w- would never had the chance to tour again, you know. At least we can um, do extensively our studio work here, you know, and write songs, you know, which yeah. we were so much into it, you know. We had really had a creative run at this point, you know. The more it's, it seemed like the more we uh, did, the more ideas were flowing, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we still have stuff left over that we didn't use. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> we have already like half of the next album could be ready already. Yeah, yeah. So in, o- in other words, if the pandemic. If the lockdowns in Germany lasted a few more months, we would have had three albums. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would have been the triple album, album right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Rage was something very unique because you also like you fit in everywhere and you kind of fit in nowhere at the same time. Like you were, you were. Sometimes you were too heavy. Sometimes you weren't heavy enough. Sometimes you were too fast. Sometimes you weren't fast enough. And people would loop you in with thrash bands, and people loop you in with hard rock bands and prog yeah. bands. Even <laughs> looking back now, at after all this time, that diversity that you've had, um, that uniqueness, was that was that in hindsight was that a blessing or was that sometimes also a curse? Because you could play with everybody, but you were always the weird one. Yes, it, I, th- I would say both. You know, it's uh, it was a, definitely not so not so easy for for a quick career. You know, because yeah. Rage definitely is a band you have to uh, find out about. You know, you have to really listen to it. You have to work it yourself into the thing. You know, and uh, yeah, I give you right. Sometimes we were really sitting in between the chairs. <laughs> um, However, it, it, uh, you know, you never can plan this kind of stuff, you know, this, uh, things just happen, you know, and uh, you, uh, as a musician, you, you, you grow, you, things, you get influenced by stuff, you know, and um, I mean, if I would have had a plan from the beginning on, like, I'm, uh, like a lot of younger bands nowadays, they have a real business plan, you know, they, they before they release their first album, they know exactly how the 10th the album will be like, you know. But I mean, this is, yeah, this is business-wise. This might be clever, but on the other hand, for a musician, it's not so interesting. Then you know, it's right. kind of predictable and not really creative what you're doing there. You know, you're just uh, repeating yourself over and over. Uh, can be for some bands, this might be the way. You know, but it was never really my way. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I paid for this uh, by being not so successful like for example metallic or acdc you know <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> not, yeah not that uh, not that easy to be to to, uh, to be recognized but but those fans that we have they are really true and they believe in the band and they like especially this you know? so yeah, yeah, yeah. on the other hand it kept me going you know <laughs> You said something about recognizability, sure. The music may have been different at times, but I do have to ask you, because I've always wanted to know, and I, I don't think I ever found out, um, not all, but often on Rage albums, we've seen um, some sort of mascot in need of a, you know, an appointment with a dentist, uh, because very sharp, you know, metal teeth and, and what have you. Um, what What's the backstory there? Did that... I, I, I don't know if it was properly really your mascot, but does the creature have a name? Where did it come from? 
Yeah, the, it has a name. It's it's called the Sound Chaser. Okay. And it, it comes from a from a from a, um, a sc sculpture artist from Vienna in Austria. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Joachim Lütke is his name, and he invented this. Uh, it, it was a three-headed sculpture. Um, wow, middle middle eighties or so. He made this. It's it's huge. You know the the, the original sculpture is really huge, and I think it's. It's now in New York somewhere. Okay. <laughs> some, it's standing in, in some um, uh, business tower somewhere. At least what that's what he told me once. And he, uh, a, a couple of years later, in 19, 1987, he drew a picture also from one of these heads, you know, which ended up to be uh, the cover for Perfect Man for, yeah. uh, for the album we made in 1988. Um, and I, I just bumped into it very accidental, you know. I, <laughs> the story is, is, sounds quite weird. I found it in the garbage can of uh, uh, Ralph Hubert, the, the bass player from Mekong Delta, which I was working also as yeah. a side project at this time, you know. <laughs> I just found it in his in his, in his uh, trash bin. And I was like, what is this? You know, oh, these are some, some cover motives uh, an artist from Vienna sent me, you know. He had a his own perfect label back then, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he didn't want to have this stuff, you know. He, he was not interested and just threw it in the bin. And I, f I found it there and I thought, wow, it looks great, you know. I like to, ha I, I want to have this, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I, I contacted the guy and he was like very excited, like, yeah, yeah, okay. And we we met and uh, then he also drew our, our logo uh, for, for, for the album. So the story be began uh, with Perfect Man and the Sound Chaser as our mascot. And he kind awesome. of survived the world the years. He has, <laughs> he has. Phase, he, has you know? he, he changed his, his more. He morphed a bit, you know. He changed his his sound sides, but in uh, some trademarks are still there. This is kind of metal jaws are still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of headphones, you know. We're dying to live. We, we will we will see the sound chaser on lots of merch and backdrops and what have you when you continue this 40th anniversary tour um it, it, you already have shows announced throughout the year and i believe you've got more coming next year as well yeah, but yeah, an still in the making yeah exactly uh, an, a more, an important part is obviously the summer run with the big summer european festivals uh, where we'll see you so um for for those festival shows specifically, um, where bands of your legacy tend to focus a little bit more on that legacy and less so much on the net new work, um, for those big shows, what can we expect from uh, from Rage on stage? Yeah, of course we have to. Uh, we and it, we have to uh, do all the, the the band classics in the set, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to have at least um, two or maybe three songs from the new one also included all right all right well we'll keep our eyes and ears open for that um thank you so much for your time i know these are hectic days and uh you're, you're maybe still jet lagged from your time in canada you already have to get ready for japan so i i wish you and the rest <laughs> of the band a fantastic now recovery but then also obviously a fantastic run of shows and i hope to see you uh, at the summer festivals and um and i wish you the best with this release would be great. Thank you for your support and thanks to all the fans for that support. See everybody again. <laughs> awesome. We're dying to live. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.